In 2007, the first episode of a TV series about a high school chemistry teacher turned meth kingpin began filming in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Over time, the characters of Walter White, Jesse Pinkman, Skylar White, Gus Fring, ASAC Hank Schrader, and Mike Ehrmantraut would ingrain themselves in our consciousness. And eventually, so too did Albuquerque. Cinematographer Michael Slovis captured the impossibly blue skies and postcard vistas only to contrast them with the grid of the junkyards, car washes, and bodios. The juxtaposition of the mundane suburban facade of Albuquerque and its high desert panoramas soon became an integral part of the show's character. Initially lured by film incentives, creator Vince Gilligan admitted that gradually, after the first Breaking Bad episode, it started to dawn on me that we could be making a contemporary western. Added Gilligan, Albuquerque has meant the world for Breaking Bad. I can't imagine Breaking Bad being anywhere else. I can't imagine the show would be nearly as interesting as it is if it were set anywhere else. Despite the dark subject matter, many New Mexicans grew to love the reflection of their sandblasted Xanadu in the eyes of Breaking Bad's cast of characters and the strip malls, crack dens, hospitals, and restaurants they inhabited. Does this show make you proud to live in Albuquerque? Absolutely, so, why? absolutely, yes. Um, uh, Albuquerque's been a character in the show all along. It's been just a wonderful way to show off how beautiful it is here. I, I love living in Albuquerque, and this is just the icing on top of the cake. I don't live in Albuquerque. Okay. <laughs> Does it make you think about living in Albuquerque? Yes. <laughs> Um, I actually have spent two weeks here, and I love it here, and yes, definitely was one of the draws for me watching the show. Seeing Albuquerque around and be like, I've been there! Yes, definitely, seeing Albuquerque and being like, wow, um, he's like a hometown hero, even though he's a bad guy. Few TV shows or movies have created such an intimate relationship with their setting. LA and New York are such stock locations, they barely resonate anymore. Casablanca was more of a state of mind than a location, but Albuquerque. Albuquerque was just the right size and texture to capture the epic quality of Breaking Bad without getting buried in the mix. As the popularity of the show grew, it spawned an interest in Albuquerque rivaled only by the city's annual balloon fiesta. Local businesses cashed in on the show's notoriety. How did you come up with the idea? Like, how, how did it just, the well, inspiration strike? You know, the, uh, we saw Brian giving away the candy on Letterman and Leno, and we didn't have anything to do with the show at that point. So, and it was in a little plastic bag, you know, and this is how we package it, a brown bag, and you know why. <laughs> yes, I do. Anything that's illicit comes in a brown bag, whether it's <laughs> sex, drugs, or, or liquor. Rock and roll. <laughs> sex, drugs, rock and roll, liquor. So this is how it comes, my little dollar dime bag. Okay. And it's fun to, it's fun to, I to give us a gift. I don't know if you if you can get this, it would be like a real. <laughs> the nice thing is, is you know, when we first started selling candy to them, it was the first two years. And we didn't think anything was going to come of it. All of a sudden, here they are getting awards and everything else. And I started doing the little blue bags, and guess what? Then it started. And then, you know, then it got picked up by the news. So once that happened, it went viral. It went crazy. I've been selling little blue bags of candy <laughs> to everybody. We probably went through a thousand just today. It's been wonderful for Gertrude Zachary having Breaking Bad filming here because this is, of course, a destination for them, which pleases us. And uh, I came in right after they filmed the early first season of Breaking Bad with the tiara scene, which was filmed in our back stock room. That was the interrogation room. And we still have people come in almost on a daily basis asking about the child's tiara that was stolen and do we still have it. We don't, unfortunately. All right. It was stolen. Right. <laughs> but we did have uh, some of the cast members and some of the crew come in and shop with us. And, of course, Giancarlo was our favorite. He was very charming, unlike his character, <laughs> who's quite the opposite. Tourists arrive from around the world just to see the home where Walter White lived, the car wash where Skylar laundered meth money, or the fast food restaurant that served as a cover for drug lord Gus Fring. Uh, you know, we did keep the Los Pollos Hermanos logo up, of course, so, you know, people come here and, oh, you guys kept it up? We're like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, of course we did. Like, so some people actually kind of like sneak up to the door, crack the door open and take a quick picture and then run off. 
And I'm like, no, come back, come sign the book. Like, no, <laughs> it's okay. But most people, the first thing they do when they walk in, they'll look right at that sign and take a picture. And so this elderly couple came in one time and they were like, you guys don't serve chicken? <laughs> and in my head, I was thinking, no, we don't, I'm sorry. I was like, you know, we have a few things with chicken. And they were so sad, I felt so bad. <laughs> we have about good like 65, 70 people a day come in. Um, you know, just to take pictures or sign the guest book or, um, you know, or eat, try the food. Um, so it's really fun. I mean, I've got to meet people from Germany, from Paris, uh, let's see, Estonia, uh, Japan. I mean, everywhere. I'm telling you, everywhere. It is awesome. Yeah, we didn't have any idea that it would really take off like this um, as far as, you know, people coming in and checking out the, the uh, pictures we have up and, and looking for souvenirs. There's people taking pictures out front, you know, driving by. Um, there's also a few tours going on around town where they stop by here and check it out. And, uh, we have a few souvenirs for sale as well, and you could even get your car washed at the, at the Walter White Wash. A lot of people do bring their rental cars, actually. <laughs> Through the summer of 2013, tourists and locals continue to flock to many of the Breaking Bad locations throughout the city. We were warned. The, the um, original production designer said, he, he said, I hope you're ready for this, because he said, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this series is going to be picked up, th this pilot is going to be picked up as a series, and I have never seen anything like it. And he was right, and he warned me, but even that warning didn't come close to what's actually happened. Every time I walk by my kitchen, I see three more cars out there. So I come and I look and see where the license plates are from. If there's anything really unusual going on, I'll go out and see what's going on. Last month, we had 100, 1,085 cars here. People are just so into this show. And they come with their Heisenberg hats and every Breaking Bad t-shirt in the world, and they all do the same pose. They just, you know, it's, it's funny. They take pictures and... The fans will meet in the street and take pictures for each other because there might be a single guy or a couple. Okay. This goes on all day. Yeah. So since we landed in Albuquerque and got our car, we thought we'd come by and see it real quick and then head on over to Santa Fe. We're from Belgium, from Antwerp. That's the northern part, and we speak Dutch. And we love the Breaking Bad series. So we came over to Albuquerque and to visit the site from uh, where it was shot. We're here visiting them for her, her dad's 50th birthday and I wanted to come out here. <laughs> I pulled her along with me. <laughs> Smile pretty. I think I got it. Thank you. Yeah, check. it uh, takes a Double while. Check. Well, when they originally filmed the episode with the pizzas, they had pizza boxes lined up in the street and they were that high. And everybody and their brother tried the, all the prop people, the, the special effects, they all tried to get the pizza on the roof. Nobody could do it. Walt, Brian Cranston, came out of the house and was so mad, flung the pizza up. It went out of the box and stayed on the roof. It, just, it was amazing. He was the only one who did it. <laughs> and a couple of weeks later, after that had air aired, my husband came home from the library where he was volunteering, and he says to me, did you happen to put a, throw a pizza on the roof or something <laughs> crazy? He said, no, I just took a pizza off the roof. There's somebody had come by and thrown a little oh. frozen pizza up on the roof. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I got a rock. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> Meanwhile, the buzz around the show reached a crescendo as the saga of Walter White played itself out each week in August and September. Finally, on September 29th, Breaking Bad was poised to reveal the fate of one of TV's most celebrated villains. The finale, which aired September 29th, 2013, drew a record number of viewers. In Albuquerque, an estimated 1,000 fans gathered at the Hotel Albuquerque for a farewell celebration. This is their story. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know who we might be able to call if we need some legal aid? Better call us all. <laughs> Why are you here tonight to watch the show? Oh, who wouldn't be? I mean, if you're a diehard fan, this is the place to be.
did you think of the show tonight? Oh my God. I have a little bit of a, a pain in my stomach. Uh, I'm mourning, I'm mourning Walter White. So what, what did you think about the ending of the show? Oh wow, that was unreal. I loved it. It didn't go exactly to my predictions, but all the people that needed to die did. Perfect. <laughs> that was actually the highlight of the night when Jesse wrapped up, sorry, wrapped yeah. his uh, handcuffs around Todd's neck. That was like the highlight. I mean, the machine gun in the back of the car. I mean, how it, it was just—he wiped him out. Well, he, he went out. He went out like a man, like Hank. He went down. He, he took them all down. He showed them all. What did you guys think of the ending? Oh my God, it was awesome. Those damn commercials were just there just to break up each like little climax point. Like every single time the commercial went, I was like, Oh my God, did you just see that? What will I miss now that it's over? I mean, the great writing, the great storytelling, uh, the great cinematic story that was unfolded in front of our eyes. Hmm. Empathizing with horrible people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just the intensity of the show, the, the fierceness, the actors, and all the, the nitty gritty of it. What won't I miss? Right. I mean, come on, now we have like meth donuts. <laughs> yeah. I'll just miss that. It's not here anymore. It feels weird. It feels like, all right, like now I go home. Life. Yeah, what am I going to do on back. Sunday night? The team, the kids, the, the lovelies that cleaned up the blood every day. It was, they're beautiful people. It's the greatest ride ever, and it will never be topped. And Vince, if you're watching, I love you. You're a freaking genius. I don't know. I, I kind of had a crush on Walt Jr. <laughs> so. What are you going to miss most? Ah, oh, the meth. <laughs> I got some from the candy lady, though. Okay. She sells some. She's supposed to hook us up later. She's my dealer now. I hear, I hear it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. Oh, it's tight. <laughs> Uh, what do I walk away with? It kind of just um, it shows how human nature can lead you into a really tormenting kind of thing. And so it kind of shows that aspect of people, but it shows that everybody's capable of terrible things. I was an extra, but it was thrilling. It was really thrilling. I mean, of course, everybody's not on the set at the same time, but just to be a part of it in a small way, which all of us here in Albuquerque are, it's, it's really exciting. I think the, the seri series uh, scored a lot in Belgium because it was so realistic. There were good actors in it and uh, it was an interesting uh, fact about drugs and so on, yeah. The last night they filmed at the house was amazing. Uh, the only one of the actors that was supposed to be here was Anna Gunn, but she was on, she had to go to California on an emergency thing and her body double was here because it was only a, a shot out the window. And we were sitting there and talking and I had cookies for everybody and um, all of a sudden the door opened and in came Brian and Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston and Mike Slovis and Stu Lyons and they came to say goodbye and thank you. And I, it took everything I had not to cry. And I can cry just talking about it because it was, it was so sad and it was so sweet. They didn't have to do that. And it was just, it just melted my heart.